Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino inviting you to another adventure concerning the Nouveau Vintage Pocket 386 computer. A modern made machine with ancient characteristics such as 8 megabytes of RAM, an Intel 8386 compatible processor by AMD and a compact flash card of 2 gigabytes coming pre-installed with DOS and Windows. Windows for work groups 3.11 or Windows 95, depending on the version of the machine you have purchased. Having a compact flash card as a hard disk, of course, offers us the convenience of taking it out and simply putting it into a card reader in order to work with it from the comfort of our main machines. And today's topic concerns providing a new operating environment, not quite an operating system, but still on the Pocket 386. You see, if you want to multitask in DOS, normally you would be starting out by typing Win and getting into Windows. But there is an alternative called Desk View, which I want to show you today. Uh, it is Desk written with a Q. And that is a, an application facilitating a sort of multitasking. Desk view appears here in a blue menu that you can always trigger by pressing Alt. And it has some predefined applications that you could start by selecting them and pressing Enter. You're just moving along here with the arrow keys it is super simple. You do not need a mouse. And if you wanted to, you could make use of those predefined options such as DOS Edit, DOS Q Basic, and so on and so forth. Or of course, you can go for adding your own program the way I did here with SX Lisp. In fact, I think I can say CP and then Enter. And that's what you do in order to set up your own program. You say, how is it called? Does it have any command line parameters? And in which directory shall it be operating? And down there, then you take care of a couple of further definitions. And in the end, you simply press enter when you are done. Well, anyway, having here these applications makes it possible for us to start them simply by pressing enter. And there we have the Lisp environment straight in front of us, working just as you would expect it to do in normal DOS. And when we press again Alt, we can open another window. For instance, we could open DOS Edit. And we can again press Alt. And again, open another window. For instance, we want to open a big DOS window. All of these windows remain managed by desk view and pressing Alt just gets us back into the blue menu where we could also switch windows. I could actually go back to editing or, <laughs> okay, here I'm somewhere in the menu. Or I could also say that I want to zoom that window so that it's not so small. I could again press Alt. You know, it conflicts a little bit with the Alt for the menus of, of the DOS application, but that's not a big tragedy. Anyway, pressing again Alt allows me to, op to switch to, let's say, XLisp again. And again, I can say I want to zoom it. In other words, that way you can open up a lot of windows and you can do a lot of things in parallel. That is a definition of multitasking, more of organizational rather than technical nature. Technically, it just looks as if a lot of the memory above 640K is being used by the desk view manager, but still we do get decent amounts of memory for our own applications. And really we can start quite a lot of things that way and work in parallel quite reasonably without having to resort to Windows. And let's be frank, 
perchance quite cumbersome mouse movements. So, it's not a new operating system. It's just an extremely decent task switcher for DOS. But certainly this is something you can experiment with without having to back up your original Windows disk, installing some new OS and so on and so forth. Instead, I believe this can simply provide a lot of comfort to your DOS machine as it is. That's all well and fine, you might think, but where might you get these programs from? Well, they are available in various corners of the internet, but for instance, on archive.org, you shall find the Quarterdeck Expanded Memory Manager in version 7. There, you're interested in two files, the ISO image and the JPEG file. The ISO image is really not an ISO image. This is just a floppy disk image. You can even see it by the size of 720 kilobyte. And that is the installation floppy whose contents you can, in fact, copy over to some location of your choice where from installation will be easier, such as a directory on the compact flash card of your Pocket 386, provided that you own a compact flash card reader that would allow you to simply mount the compact flash card and copy things over to it. As to the mounting of the image, depending on the operating system, that might be hassle-free. If you are on Ubuntu, you just need to double-click it and it will be mounted and you can copy the contents. The JPEG you will need for the serial number. In fact, here you have it, 003-37, the letter E, minus 88235. And that will allow you to install CHEM, or the Quarterdeck Expanded Memory Manager. Now, regarding desk view itself, I resorted to winworldpc.com. I'm quite sure that they actually would have CHEM too. Yeah, I just got it from elsewhere. Anyway, when you find here desk view, it's important that you get the right version. There are two desk views here with an X specification. They are actually rather foreseen for remotely viewing graphical Unix applications, not actually what we're here very much interested in. And then you're having available releases one and two. I went for two. And there I went for quarter deck desk view 2.8 from 1996. Yeah, that really came again as a floppy disk. And this floppy disk you can again mount and its contents again you can transfer to any directory of your choice on the compact flash card in order to facilitate installation without a floppy drive. And that's it, that's all there is to it. Installing desk view is no high art. In fact, the whole process is so intuitive that I don't deem it necessary to get much into it here. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for having joined. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to cross paths with you in future videos soon again. Until we meet, I wish you a wonderful time. And from me, goodbye.